The Rainmaker Multiplier On Demand Series is brought to you by Clarity to Prosperity, a financial training, coaching, and IP development organization led by financial advisors, coaches, and business leaders committed to taking a holistic approach to advising. To learn more about our organization and upcoming training opportunities for financial professionals, visit ClarityToProsperity.com. Welcome to the Rainmaker Multiplier Podcast. This is Jason Smith, your host, and we're continuing the series of how to grow your business in a virtual environment and really under the playing offense umbrella. So I've invited uh, Chris Ross of 8-Digit Media to join us today. Did I say your name right, Chris? Is it Chris Ross or Voss? Uh, no, it is. That's correct. It's Ross, R O S S. Good. Um, for 8-Digit Media to join us today, and mainly because um, three of our uh, mastermind members uh, that I uh, have great respect for um, are all three using Chris. Some are at early stage. One has been using him for quite some time. Jude, what, over a year now, right, Chris? Yes, correct. Yep. And having great success. He was where uh, Chris actually originally was introduced, and then... Um, uh, Mary, who just successfully last night um, completed her first uh, webinar utilizing you and your services, Chris. And then another Don that uh, is engaged with you and is uh, launching his. And I think his is like next week or something, right? Is that what you said? Or It's coming up on the 21st. So we're a little more than a week away uh, from, from his. Yeah. And so I'm excited. Um, to interview today, uh, you, Chris, today, because, you know, I've interviewed White Glove, um, and I've been a group, interviewed AFIA, and how they're pivoting to operate in a virtual environment. And so, um, you know, they traditionally were just doing in-person marketing. But at the end of the day, um, you know, I think White Glove, it, I mean, I know White Glove is filling the workshops all through Facebook. And I know that, you know, AFIA is filling the workshops uh, primarily through direct mail, but doing some digital as well, right? Some online marketing, a combination of the two. And then um, uh, they're kind of still trying to crack that code. And, and yours is all Facebook. Is that right, Chris? That is correct. Yeah. So, and, and what's interesting to me is just the pricing of the different models and you know, White Glove, I would say, is like the 800-pound gorilla. You know, they're a huge company and, you know, throwing a lot of uh, resources and people at it, but a little bit more expensive, too. And, and what I like is I feel like when you look at it from a big picture standpoint, you can completely outsource it. And let's take the nonprofit out of it. So let's take a FIA because it's a little bit different animal doing the nonprofit. They're doing direct mail. But let's compare like White Glove, who's all Facebook, and they're like very a big company, right? Um, 800 pound of gorilla kind of example. And then you have the do-it-yourselfers, which I we have about a half dozen advisors in our network that nuts to bolts are filling their own seminars, webinars um, through Facebook, uh, through a process that we've built um, more recently, mainly off of what they were doing. And they're doing a 100% do it yourself. But the reality is, there's not that many people that could do it themselves. You have to, I mean, there's quite a bit involved with it. And so you know, there are some that will be able to figure it out with the process we've developed, but I don't think there's that many. And then when you go to the other end of the spectrum to like a white glove, it's pretty expensive, right? I mean, at $99 a registration, not attendee, $99 a registration, I mean, you know, say 50% show up, you know, you're talking about 200 bucks an attendee on a webinar. And granted, they're doing above and beyond a lot. You know, ev they're dotting every I, crossing every T, doing everything. It's the most expensive, and it's a full outsource option. The least expensive is to do it yourself, and people are doing it for about 25 bucks a pop, running their own ads, filling their own seminars. 
I feel like Chris, you're kind of like a hybrid in between, right? It's like, you're going to give, you know, the guideline, you're going to do most of the stuff, but you're going to put some of that onus, like the follow-up confirmation calls, et cetera, on the advisor, but it's going to be less expensive than the white glove model. Do you, would you agree with that from an assessment standpoint? Yes, I would. I, I definitely feel like we kind of fall uh, in between the, the the DIY people and then, you know, as you mentioned, White Glove, who has a, uh, you know, kind of full service type of turnkey uh, process for people. So we can kind of stand in the middle and, um, you know, give you the opportunity to save some money, uh, but at the same time, still take a lot off of your plate that you don't need to deal with uh, and still get a uh, you know, great results, uh, if not better than what you're either doing yourself or even better results than maybe with some of the other providers that, that some advisors may have used in the past. That's great. And Chris, I know we were talking before this, you started doing this about five years ago. And what I think makes you very attractive, other than you just being a great looking dude, right? <laughs> <laughs> but, no, what I think makes uh, your company um, eight digit, very attractive is you get to work with you personally, right? The owner of the company. And so there's something to be said for that of working with, you know, directly with the person that's doing the work and kind of, now I know you have a small team around you, but I mean, that's, that's kind of a big deal to have that. I don't know, for lack of better words, accountability, right? Of being able to work directly with you. Um, I like that that kind of a boutique concierge kind of feeling of working directly with a small agency like yours. And, and I really like the fact that, you know, you limit your clients to 30. You won't work with more than 30 at a time. I think you said you have 17 right now that you're actively engaged with. Um, and, you know, there's, so there's 13 spots. And, like, you know your numbers. You know your capacity. And when you get to that, that's it, Right. And so, um, I don't know, I like that, you know, I like that feeling of being able to work directly with, you know, with the owner. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's definitely a big part of, of my business. Um, you know, one of the biggest things, uh, or I could say kind of maybe complaints that I've heard from some of the, some of some other advisors with dealing with some of the other vendors and such is that you really don't have that kind of one-on-one, -on -one, uh, personal service that you can get from people. Uh, it's someone that can, you know, immediately provide you with uh, honest and open and transparent feedback uh, that will allow you to make the adjustments that you would need in your marketing to, to, to get the results that you're looking for. Uh, so I, I definitely pride myself for, on customer service. Uh, I, I do get a lot of a lot of feedback from our partners on uh, just being able, to, just being responsive. Uh, I mean, just the other day, uh, I had someone uh, who, who told me that, you know, every time we give you a call, you seem to have an answer for something and everybody else, uh, they're, they're kind of stonewalling. And, and it's not because I know so much or anything, some stuff I don't know, uh, but I am super responsive and it's, it's very important to provide a, a, a good customer service experience to everybody because uh, that's what we're all looking for. That's great. And so, Chris, tell me, um, you know, let's just share some results a little bit just because it's, it's hot off the press. I was getting text messages last night from Mary, all excited about the webinar that um, she put on. And she utilized uh, you to help fill it. And, um, you know, we helped with a lot of the best practices and content and et cetera um, at C2P. So it was a good one-two punch, right? Um, of what, where you were able to fill the workshops and, um, you know, and, uh, and then we were able to help with the content and whatnot. But I, uh, I really, uh, let, let's share, share, with, share with us some of the, uh, the numbers if you have those, or if you want, I can pull up the text she sent me. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, definitely have the numbers on that. And I do have to give a, a, a lot of props to, to Mary and uh, her, her presentation. Uh, when I emailed her this morning to get the feedback from her, and she told me how many calls she booked, I was looking at the, the booking ratio. And uh, it's definitely higher than what we are seeing with some of our other partners. And I told her that was definitely a testament to her ability to do a good presentation because that's really, it's going to be the key to you booking phone calls, 
else, right? We can help you fill, you know, get people registered, make sure people show up to the webinar, uh, but the advisor needs to be proficient in being able to put on a good presentation. And uh, I mean, she really knocked it, knocked it out of the park uh, with that. So uh, just a little bit of background on what we did for her. So uh, we ran this webinar uh, in, uh, you know, she has two offices. So we, we did this kind of in the South Dakota area uh, for where she's located. And for this particular campaign, uh, you know, we use social media. So it was basically Facebook and Instagram. And uh, we got 71 people registered uh, for the webinar total. And we spent approximately $1,173 on Facebook ads, right? So they kind of put us roughly just a little under 20 some dollars per registration, which is what you mentioned before with some of your DIY people and kind of what, what they're doing there. Uh, so those yep. numbers are, are definitely in range. And um, with our particular webinar, uh, we were able to get, uh, you know, 36% of the people who registered to show up, uh, which falls within the KPIs that we established. Uh, that's kind of one of the things that I go over uh, with our partners and just sharing general information as a whole is that, uh, you know, with any webinar, registrations ultimately don't matter at the end of the day. It's the, the, the next biggest metric is going to be how many people shows up. And right. if you get between 30 and 40 percent of the people who register to show up, uh, then you're, you know, you're, you're definitely doing pretty good. So we, we, we kind of we hit the number with that respect. And then she went on to book 36 percent of those who attended uh, to a virtual you know, meeting or virtual phone call. So uh, for her, that equated to, to nine calls that are being booked. So uh, she was super excited this morning, sent me a, a very good email, and I was uh, definitely excited to hear the good news. Yeah, it's awesome. So she had 23 attended, so got, um, and she had uh, uh, 70 or 71 registered, right? Mm -hmm. so captured leads that she can continue to drip on for those 71. And I think people lose sight of the, the, you know, the value just in that alone right, is 71 people that could be a great fit to be a client of your firm. And then from there, though, 23 of those people did attend the webinar. And out of those 23, nine booked appointments. So yeah, they're just great results. So Chris, let's talk about, let, let's walk us through the customer. I'm talking about customer being Mary, right? Mm -hmm. but her experience with your firm from start to finish, to get this campaign done, what and, and what the cost was in order to do. I know you shared eleven hundred bucks for the actual ad, but how much did it cost to pay you? And tell, go all the way back to the beginning. What's the first phone call you had with Mary? And then walk us through all the way to the webinar successfully executed last night, please. Yeah, great, great, great question. So uh, typically, well, for Mary in particular, right, as with a lot of advisors right now, we were doing her in-person seminars before the whole coronavirus thing hit. And we were doing them for, for, for one of her advisors down in the Kansas City area. Uh, so, uh, you know, we have been running those seminars since last year for her, and we're getting some good results. And of course, the coronavirus comes around and then everything kind of stops for a brief moment. And uh, I have been sending out emails, just kind of letting people know that, hey, you know, we are able to do webinars. Uh, it's what we originally started out doing. So it, this is not new for us, uh, as with some companies, uh, for example. And uh, so she reached out to me and, you know, let me know that she was interested in doing some webinars. So we got on the call. And one of the very first things that I like to go over with, with people is the market that they are in, right? So obviously, Webinars in the past were not a hugely attended event uh, for the demographic that most advisors are targeting. You're talking baby boomers, et cetera. Uh, they would sign up for them, but people just were not attending them in large droves as, as they're kind of doing right now. Um, so we wanted to take a look at her market and take a look at some numbers on Facebook and see, one, if it was big enough to support doing a webinar, right? Because sometimes webinars may not be the thing for you, and I would definitely let somebody know that. Uh, so we took a look at her market and made a determination that, you know, that, that there were some were enough people there in order to do that. So that was the very first thing. Uh, the next thing that we really wanted to discover was what 
what was the right webinar to do right now, right? So obviously with COVID-19 and everything that's going on, a lot of people are kind of tailoring their presentations to that. And she was wanting to know whether or not that was a good idea or should she stick to something uh, that she's probably been doing in the past, you know, kind of general retirement planning, et cetera. Um, and one of the great benefits about working with an agency like us is that because we get to run these campaigns in multiple different markets, we get to test a lot of different things. We know what ad copy works. We know which hooks work, et cetera. So I share this information with our partners uh, without, you know, giving away the advisor's information, but we share the feedback. And I told her that, um, you know, if we, if we did a presentation and, and we can relate that to COVID-19, uh, that that would be successful for her. Uh, so that was kind of the second thing that, that we went over. And then beyond that, it was just a matter of taking her through the entire process of, of what's going to happen, uh, which is very much similar to uh, how our process works for our in-person seminar. So uh, when you partner with us, we are responsible for uh, creating your campaign. So uh, Mary and her team didn't need to do anything other than show up for the actual webinar. So we take care of uh, creating the Facebook campaigns, we'll write the ad copy, we'll develop the creatives, we set up all the landing pages, we write the copy for that, we're responsible uh, for setting up all the automations as far as confirmations and reminders are concerned and any kind of post-webinar uh, follow-up process. So only thing Mary needed to focus on was just kind of uh, honing or, uh, you know, honing her presentation, which obviously she did a great job at because she got so many phone calls booked. And uh, she just showed up last night, logged in, logged in, did the presentation and, uh, you know, uh, hit, hit a grand slam. That's awesome. So the uh, what was the title of her presentation? Uh, the title of her webinar was uh, Retirement Readiness During the COVID-19 Crisis. Uh, okay. So that that worked out really, you know, uh, really well for her. And uh, yeah, we had some, uh, some some good results there. Good, good. And then, um, you know, the so the only thing you're not helping with the presentation and, you know, what you know, what's actually being presented. Right. That's that's on the advisor or whatever, like C2P, we help with that, right? We, we help, and then we help them with the presentation skills and different, you know, things to give them success. Um, so the, what about the, um, the calling afterward, right? So they're, they're responsible for that. Is that correct? The advisor? Yes, they, they are. So if anything that happens, uh, after the webinar, uh, beyond, you know, maybe sending an automated text messaging, uh, you know, with a link for people to book an appointment, because obviously there's going to be people who are not going to watch it and we send the replay out and all that kind of stuff. That okay, you do do that. okay. Uh, but if you are wanting to actually uh, reach out to people with a phone call, then yes, the advisor would be responsible uh, for, for that particular action. What about confirmation calls to the red people that register? Yeah, great question. Um, typically, that would be something that we would do with our in-person process, and that is a part of that. Uh, but for webinars, uh, we decided not to roll that out. Uh, one, mainly because it kind of helps keep the pricing a little bit low on the webinars as well, because we don't need the staff uh, people to actually do these phone calls. And then traditionally, uh, webinars uh, did not have really have a component where you would typically reach out to someone to say, hey, are you going to attend? Because for most people, you're just going to, you know, get on your cell phone, you're going to click the link, and you're going to watch the webinar from wherever you are. So yeah. uh, we don't have that as a part of our process, but we do have some advisors uh, that will take the initiative and will do call yeah. confirmations themselves. Great, great. And then, Chris, what was the cost then? Um, so for Mary... Did she just purchase this one webinar from you? And I think you said it was like 1100 bucks in Facebook, but then what, what other costs were associated such as paying your agency? Yeah, great question there. So uh, one of the unique things about us, and this is one of the things I, I like about what I do, and I believe our partners like as well, is that we work on a flat, a flat rate basis. Um, and then we, our whole service is geared toward uh, making sure the advisor is going to be successful in what it is that they're doing. Uh, so for Mary, what that allows her to do uh, is that allows for her to run multiple webinars per month. 
and only pay me one flat fee to do all the work for her. Uh, so for example, um, our pricing for webinars right now is $1,500 a month. So for that, for that, for that fee, that allows us to do the bulk of all the work that's needed in order to get people registered and get them to show up. The advisor just needs to show up and do the presentation and that's it. Uh, and that allows you to do uh, multiple webinars per month and you're only paying at cost for the marketing. You're not, you're not paying the $200 you know, that you're paying to White Glove and some of the other places. You're gonna pay, if it's $15 per registration, if it's $18, if it's $20, you're paying that cost because that's how we've set this particular program up. So fifteen hundred a month. How many months of a commitment do you ask for? Uh, so we work on a month to month basis. Uh, this is another thing that I believe in. I, I believe in earning my keep, so to speak. Um, and I value relationships at the end of the day. And I know for a fact that if I am providing you with a great service, I don't need a contract to keep you working with me. Um, you're going to stay around because you're getting good value, uh, you're getting a good ROI, you're getting clients at the end of the day. And on the other side of that, if I'm not doing a great job for you, uh, I should not try to make you continue to work with me uh, just because I want to make some more money, right? I mean, that's kind of a crappy relationship. I don't want to be in any relationship that's not beneficial to me. So uh, if we're not doing a great job, you can say, Chris, sayonara, goodbye. It was nice working with you. Uh, and you know, that would be the end of our relationship. So, uh, we do work on a, uh, we do work on a, uh, on a month to month basis for, for that particular reason. Great. So 1500 bucks a month. How many webinars can I do a month? What if I'm, you know, I mean, there's gotta be a limit, right? Well, yes. Yeah. So now Mary is in a unique situation because she came in under our older program and we were doing her in-person seminar. So uh, I definitely believe in taking care of the people who are already partners of ours and, are, and, and that are current clients. So for Mary, she gets to do as many webinars as she possibly can. Now, in reality, most markets can only uh, maybe hold the max of four webinars per month anyway. So uh, one a week, basically. Yes, or you can combine those. We, we, can, we can get real creative with this, but uh, for our new partners that come on, uh, that $1,500 allows them to do four webinars per month. And for a lot of people, that's going to be more webinars than your market can potentially handle, uh, unless you're doing statewide or you're going uh, nationwide, right? And, and most people are not at that, uh, at that level right now. Yeah, okay. And, uh, and then other than that, you just pay the cost for your team to buy all the ads to fill the webinars. Correct, yes, yes. So when, when I say that you're paying ad cost for the marketing, uh, one of the things that we do is uh, we set these campaigns up using the advisor's brand, right? So we're, this is another thing uh, that you're able to get by working with us is that you get to use your own branding if you would like. Uh, so. Uh, this means that people know who you are from the very beginning, right? There's no surprise uh, as to who's going to show up on the webinar. Um, you're getting your branding out there in the community in which, in, in which you live in. And then also as a kind of a secondary piece here uh, is that being that we do set these campaigns up using your brand and your assets, you own everything it is that we're doing. And this allows you to retain the digital data that you don't get with some of the other companies. So this affords you the, op the opportunity to retarget people uh, on multiple different platforms, right? So if you start thinking about outside of Facebook and Instagram, um, you can think about YouTube, Google, uh, all the different audience networks that are out there. Uh, you can continue to follow up with these people virtually and kind of follow them around and stay in front of them so that when some life event does happen, you're the person that they're going to think about to call up and say, Hey, I need some help. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. Very cool. Um, trying to think, Oh, uh, webinar platform that you use. So, um, we, you know, it's funny. We, uh, we did, uh, some white glove, uh, uh, webinars and, uh, we use big marker for that one. And then we did some on our own and we used webinar jam because we got some really positive feedback on that. And we've, we've had great experiences using webinar jam. I will say that, um, gotten very comfortable with it. Um, 
And, but I've heard of a couple others out there too. Um, there's another one, and I can't think of the name of it right now, that we used through another group that we did some estate planning um, uh, seminars. I can't remember, uh, or webinars. I can't remember the name of that uh, technology. Um, and then you're using something else too, Chris. So um, tell us about what you're using and why you're using what you're using. Yeah, great, great question. So uh, what we are using is a company called Demio. So it's D-E-M-I-O. And uh, this is a webinar platform that we like uh, for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, uh, the, the webinar software is all web-based, right? So when a registrant, uh, when somebody registers and it comes time for them to watch the webinar, there's no software to download. So when they click the link, it just opens up in whatever browser that they're using, whether it's Chrome, Firefox, Safari, whatever the case may be, uh, they can watch it on any type of device. And it's a very good user experience and the platform is, is, is really stable. It's been developed over, over the years. Uh, and it's very uh, user friendly for the, for the host also. Uh, there's not a lot of uh, buttons and different things that's gonna get you distracted. Uh, because you can get real nervous when you click that start session button on the webinar. All of a sudden, you're really focused on your presentation, and the last thing that you uh, that you you know want to do is not forget to click a, a call to action or launch a poll or something like that. So, um, uh, being that it has a very good uh, user experience, is is very important for the advisor there. Uh, the second reason why we really like this particular software uh, is just that it has some good integrations. Uh, with Zapier uh, that allows us to kind of do some more custom things on the back end. So for example, uh, I have big, I have big marker myself, right? I, I have that piece of software. I've used it. I've used Webinar Jam. Uh, but when it comes to uh, text messaging, for example, uh, using Demio and Zapier, we're, we are able to set up some, some custom automations uh, that allows us to kind of extend the text messaging capability uh, because th the fact is, half the people who register for the webinar are not going to see the confirmation email. It's either going to go to the spam folder or they're just going to forget. And people are more apt to check their phone for a text message. And if we can send that text message, you know, 10 minutes, 15 minutes before the webinar starts, then that's going to get more people on the webinar for you. And those are really the main reasons uh, why we like this particular platform is that we, we can do some custom stuff that, that we can't do with some of the others. That's great. That's great. You know, the other thing that just jumped in my head is do you, uh, Chris, did you or somebody on your team actually get on the webinar like, like an hour before with the advisor to kind of troubleshoot and that kind of stuff? Um, is that something you guys do as part of the program? Uh, yes and no. So it's not an official part of the program. Typically, what I would do with an advisor, especially if we're using the new system, is uh, we'll get on a Zoom call and I'll walk them through the entire system on Demio. So uh, we preload or set up the webinar for you. So this is another thing that you don't have to do as, it, as the advisor. You send us your slides. You send us any poll questions that you would like to ask. Um, your link to your Calendly or Schedule Once or whatever the case may be, we're going to preload the room with all that stuff for you and you don't need to worry, worry about that part of the process. Uh, but we'll get on a Zoom call and I'll take the advisor through um, where all the call to actions are, how everything looks so that they can become familiar with it, and then let them know that you definitely want to do a couple of test runs with this, right? So, uh, you know, set up a test webinar, have somebody in the office register as a registrant, and then you can go through and do a practice. And you will, you will want to do this uh, under any circumstance, whether you were working with an agency by yourself. You always want to test this and get, for, get comfortable with it. Uh, now, what I will do in a lot of instances is I will get on the webinar with the advisor as a moderator sometimes uh, just to be there as a backup and let people know, like, hey, I'm here. If you run into some problems, let me know. Uh, it's not official, but if my schedule permits it, I will get on there because I'm, uh, I'm, I'm there to support them in, in any ways that I can. Got it. Got it. So it's a negotiable, basically. <laughs> yes, yes. Negotiable that, schedule permitting. Because some yeah. advisors are scared the heck of technology, basically, you know, and doing things the first time. Um, all right, Chris, this is super helpful. Let's wrap up with just 
Uh, let's say they want to have a conversation with you to learn more. They want to do some homework on, uh, on your company. Uh, how do they find you? How do they do their homework? How do they reach out to you? What's that look like? Yeah, so uh, the easiest way to find us uh, is to just simply, uh, you know, just open up a web browser and go to 8digitmedia.com. And the word 8 is spelled out, uh, E-I-G-H-T-D-I-G-I-T-M-E-D-I-A. And there you will find all of the information uh, that you would need about us. Uh, our pricing is listed right there on the website, so it's no secret. It's very transparent uh, as to what we charge and, 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 how, and how we help individuals. And of course, uh, there are several places on the website where someone can schedule a call if they would like to reach out to us and have a, have a look more of an in-depth conversation to, to see if we would actually be a good fit for them. Excellent. And what's the length of time? Let's say I want to do a webinar as soon as possible. If I signed up with you today and, and took one of those 13 spots that you have left, um, how long is it before I can get my first webinar or uh, yeah, webinar schedule? Yeah, so it takes us about three to five days to get an entire webinar funnel set up for you. Uh, so, so from the time that you, you know, sign a proposal and you're saying, you know, hey, we're ready to go, uh, within three to five days, we can have everything set up and going. And then for most campaigns, one of the great things about webinars is that it has a much shorter campaign runtime than what you would typically do with a in-person seminar. Uh, so most of the campaigns that we run will only run between five and seven days. Uh, so about two weeks, roughly, you can have your first webinar in the can. Uh, in, in most instances, um, especially if you don't have a long uh, compliance uh, cycle, right? You know, some people's compliance is a little bit longer. Uh, if you're an RA, you do your own compliance. Uh, we love those guys. We can work with them a lot easier. We can typically knock stuff out in a much shorter time frame. So, okay, so about two weeks, not counting for, you know, compliance hiccups, basically. Yeah. Correct. Correct. Yeah, so get your presentation to compliance ASAP. <laughs> so, great. All right, well, awesome. Thank you so much for your time, Chris. Looking forward to working with you uh, out of my practice, the JL Smith Group. And uh, sounds like you got, you know, you're a great guy. You got a great little uh, agency there and uh, love the, uh, the hands-on service you're providing and the results that I'm hearing about already of uh, friends that are that are working with you. So thanks for being on the podcast. And and thank you for for having me on here. Uh, definitely a great opportunity for myself and and I definitely look forward to continuing to to serve not only your colleagues uh, but you know anyone else that comes along as as, as well as yourself. So uh, thank you very much for that and uh, I appreciate it. All right. All right. Well, we'll be catching you all next time on the next podcast. Hopefully uh, you take action, and whether it's the full outsource model of like a white glove or a do it yourself and figure out all the pixels and everything else on your own, uh, or the hybrid that you can use uh, using Chris's system, which is more thorough than I even realized before we got on the podcast. But take action, move forward, don't get left behind, embrace this new environment, and we'll talk to you and you'll hear from us soon the next podcast. Thank you. The Rainmaker Multiplier On Demand Series is brought to you by Clarity to Prosperity, a financial training, coaching, and IP development organization led by financial advisors, coaches, and business leaders committed to taking a holistic approach to advising. To learn more about our organization and upcoming training opportunities for financial professionals, visit clarity2prosperity.com.